This is a special report from ABC News Digital. Hello, everyone. I'm Dan Kleffler in New York with this ABC News Digital special report. It is New York versus Chicago in the battle of the buildings. There is a big debate on whether New York's new World Trade Center is really taller than Chicago's Willis Tower. This is a live look, as you see there, from the tower. The Freedom Tower, as it is also known, is a symbolic 1,776 feet tall. But that is including the 408-foot spire. And some architects say that that shouldn't count as part of the building, which would mean that the World Trade Center would be 83 feet shorter than Chicago's Willis Tower. So to settle that fight, an expert committee of architects took the matter into their own hands. The height committee of the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat is about to announce the verdict. Let's listen in. Good morning. Thank you, everybody, uh, for, for attending this morning. Um, Okay, my name is Anthony Wood. I'm the Executive Director of the CTBUH, the Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat. I'm also a Studio Associate Professor here at the Illinois Institute of Technology. I want to thank the Illinois Institute of Technology for hosting us today. Um, we didn't quite think the room would be as packed as this, but nevertheless it is, so that's great. Uh, I'd also like to introduce my uh, colleague here on the right-hand side uh, this morning. This is Peter Wisemantel, who is the Chair of our Height Committee which was the body that ruled on, that got together on Friday um, to rule on the announcement that we're about to make. Um, Peter is a, a, the director of Super Soul Technology at Adrian Smith and Gordon Gill Architecture here in Chicago. Um, he was actually involved in the, in the Sears Tower, um, the Burj Khalifa, which is the world's current tallest building, and the Kingdom Tower, which will be the next world's tallest building. However, we're not here this morning to talk about the world's tallest building, we're here to talk about America's tallest building, or the United States of America's tallest building. And the announcement, which I'd, uh, we will, I'd, I, I will make the announcement now, then we'll turn the boards and issue the press release. America's tallest building, when it completes next year, will be one World Trade Center. After 39 years of holding the title of America's tallest building, Sears um, will be number two in the US. And we will distribute the press release and turn these boards and then we'll explain why the committee came to that decision. Can you turn off it? Okay, so the announcement today is that the One World Trade Center Tower New York has been ratified by the CTBH Height Committee as having a height of 1776 feet to the height to architectural top. Um, and you can see that in this diagram and, uh, on, the, on the panel here. Um, let me explain the process that led to that decision. The Council on Tall Buildings and Urban Habitat is the official arbiter of height and measuring tall buildings. Um, and on Friday, its height committee met here in Chicago. It is a, a group of 25 individuals um, uh, representing approximately 13 countries around the world. People from the architecture profession, engineers, construction professionals, owner developers of tall buildings. And they met to uh, spend an afternoon examining and looking at the facts with respect to One World Trade Center. We received a presentation from the design team in New York, including David Childs, who is the design architect of One World Trade Center, and also a representative of the Port Authority, which is the owner developer behind the building. The issues, the issues that were discussed on Friday were basically twofold. The first issue was, is the topmost structure on the One World Trade Center, a spire or an antennae? 
And this is an important, uh, that, that was an important aspect because in our criteria, spires count in the height of buildings and antennae do not count. And the issue was that earlier this year, actually last year, the, the architectural cladding which was originally envisaged to, um, to crown that, that, that topmost structure uh, was removed from the design. And therefore there was confusion, uh, I think, generally as to whether that would be a, uh, a, a, a spire or an antennae. The, the height committee looked at it in detail and they ruled virtually unanimously that that was indeed a spire and not an antennae. And the reason for this is a number of reasons, but the key word here, the key word is permanence. The decision that the um, the decision that antennae do not count in the height of a building is because the, the antennae are not permanent to the building design. If we think about the Sears the Willis Sears Tower here in Chicago, when that building was originally finished, there were no antennae on top. The antennae then came on the building. Um, depending on the prevalent technologies, the antennae may get shorter or higher. Um, and indeed, we saw that. The, the antennae got about 16 feet taller, I think, in the year 2000. So antennae do not count in the height of a, of a tall building because they are functional technical equipment which is put on top. Um, the committee were quite clear that that was not the case on One World Trade Center. This is a permanent feature. And we, can, we know that it's a permanent feature because of the, the, the sacrosanct aspect of the 1776 height. In other words, that crowning structure is never to be added to, never to be taken away. And further to that, it has been since it's a very symbolic height, not only because of the 1776, but because that height is marked with the um, with the incorporation of a lighthouse type beacon within the crowning structure at that height. And this was quite influential on the committee. It's not only the fact that it's 1776 and the, the topmost structure would not be um, altered in any way in the future, but that this was marked with a very important architectural element, a very important architectural and, and, and symbolic element, which is the beacon, which will shine out every night, as well as the, the, the mast being, uh, the, 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 the spire being lit up um, you know, uh, on, on special occasions and uh, at nighttime, things like that. So there you can see on the left hand side, 1776 height to architectural top. Here we see a close up view of the, ante of the spire. Next, next slide. Here we see a view in the factory of this beacon element which is on top of the spire as we see it here. And on the right hand side, a close up of the, of the spire being assembled. And even though the cladding was taken off this spire, you can still see that it is an architectural element. Subjectively, you might not like it. But the council is not here to give a subjective opinion. It's to measure height and give an objective opinion on the height of that spire. And therefore, um, this was an architectural feature. It is not just a plain steel mast from which to hang uh, antennae and uh, satellite dishes. There we see the spire lit up in the evening. Now the other issue, there were two issues at the One World Trade Center. The first issue was the, um, was the spire on top. The other issue was the base of the building. Because the CTH height criteria at the base of the building states that the, the, the height of the building is measured from the lowest level open air significant pedestrian entrance. And there was some confusion with the One World Trade Center because there are three entrances on the north, east and west side all at the same level, accessed off the Memorial Plaza, and that's where the 1776 height was measured from. But there is a lower entrance, which you can see to the north there, off Vesey Street, which is five feet and eight inches lower than the main entrance. And there was debate as to whether there should indeed be a five feet and eight inches ha added to the height. Um, and the committee um, discussed this at some length and decided that according to the C2H height criteria, that entrance 
is not classed as significant. And the reason is because the whole of that floor that you see, the whole of that floor is at one level, and I believe it's projected that something like 99% of people will be entering the building via those three entrances off the Memorial Plaza. Not from Vesey Street, which you can see you come through doors and then go, go up a series of steps to access the lobby floor. So there you see an image of, um, of the main entry from Memorial Plaza. So I know many of you are, are here today because we're in Chicago interested in how this impacts uh, the Willis or Sears Tower. Um, this is a diagram of the projected tallest 10 buildings in the world. Now, there's one very, very important thing to point out here. One World Trade Center is not the tallest building in the US and will not be until it is completed. Another aspect of our criteria is the building has to be complete and occupied before it is classed as a building. So we are not saying today that One World Trade Center is the tallest building in the US. We are saying we are projecting it to be the tallest building in the US when it completes early next, which is projected for early next year. What you see in this diagram here is the tallest 10 buildings in the world as we anticipate it when One World Trade Center is complete. And you will see that One World Trade Center moves into number three position in, in, on that list. The tallest building in the world is Burj Khalifa, complete and occupied. S number two is Mecca Clock Tower in Saudi Arabia, complete and occupied. Number three will be One World Trade Center. You will see that S Willis Sears Tower is in number 10th position in terms of its relative weighting in the world. And if you look at that diagram, you will see that the reason that the, the topmost structure on the Willis Tower does not count in the height is because those are considered antennae and not spires. ...of the Willis Tower, and you can see those antennae, and you can see the height of the Willis Tower, um, which is... which is uh, 1,451 feet to the, to the roof level. And there was, there's another important point here which I'd like to point out. If you look at this diagram here, if you look at this image, and you see the height of that mast, the height of that spire, I think it's important to understand that this, the height of this building, the height of the roof of One World Trade Center was set symbolically at the height of the old World Trade Center building. So, you know, this was part of the discussion on Friday. This was not, this was not really an attempt, we believe, by, by the design team to build a shorter building and then try and get greater height by building a big spire on top. There's a lot of symbolism in this design and the symbolism is the height of the roof is the old height of the World Trade Center and then the spire crowns to that 1776 feet high. And I think that's important because there's been a lot of uh, uh, discussion in the press about this building trying to achieve a greater height than, than just the roof level. And, and, and a final couple of slides is just to point out why the council in the mid-90s made the decision between spires and antennae, made that distinction. If we count antennae in the height of the building as functional technical equipment, then where do we stop? Do we start to count water towers? Do we count signage on the top of the building? There is a beautiful view outside the windows there to Chicago, and you will see the Aon building, which two years ago put a 20-foot anemometer on top of the building. Did that mean that the building got 20 feet taller? It's back to this question of permanence. So that was the decision that was made in the, in the, in the 1990s. And, 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 and also, as we're gathered here, I'd just like to state for the record that when, when the then Sears building lost the title of the world's tallest to Petronas Towers in the mid-1990s, what was not widely reported was that the Sears Tower was going to lose its title that day, whichever way the council ruled. If it did not count the antennae, then, then Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur would be higher. However, if, it, if we did count the antennae, then the Sears Tower would never have been the world's tallest building because 
the antennae on top of one, the then One World Trade Center was higher than the Sears Tower. And that was kind of not reported in the press. Flagpoles, wind turbines, all these topmost structures which are considered uh, technical functional equipment. And um, I'm not going to go through the, the high criteria in detail unless you have any detailed questions on it, but we've issued a press release announcing this today. And at the back of the press release, our height criteria, including many, many footnotes, is shown in detail. So I think this is the point where myself and Peter will take any questions that you have. What was the uh, breakdown of the committee as far as uh, geographic? Well, it was very much a worldwide committee. I'm sorry. It was very much a worldwide committee represented not only geographically, but also within the disciplines that, that build, own, and operate uh, and design uh, tall buildings. And there, there's, a, there's a detailed list that Anthony will share with you. 13 countries. 22 companies, 19 cities, 30. 22 companies, 13 countries, 19 cities represented on the 25 uh, member committee. So no one bias towards any city. Are the committee members listed in here or not? Uh, the, na the names are not listed, but, the, but they're actually on the website. It's your affiliation. Yeah, the affiliations and and also, and it also is not only geographically we're re well represented, but also, as I mentioned, disciplines. Six architects, uh, five structural engineers, five contractors, suppliers, three academics, a couple of facade consultants, uh, MEP, fire engineer, and uh, miscellaneous consultants made up the other four. Uh, given that 1776 has become a kind of patriotic number, did the council feel any pressure, or was any pressure put on it? from politicians, others, to rule in favor of one WTC? No, absolutely not. But although we were a little, little worried about Anthony with his British background. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd like to answer that as well, Blair, because you and I spoke about it several times in advance at, at, at the meeting on Friday. Um, I'd like to make clear that the committee was well aware of the gravity of this decision well aware of the gravity of this decision. They knew exactly what was at stake and the symbolism and the importance of One World Trade Center and also the impact here on, on, on Chicago. However, to answer your question, absolutely not. Ultimately, if this was 25 rational people, we're talking architects and engineers, we're talking the people who are designing and building these buildings all around the world who got together, reviewed the facts and made a, 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 you know, a, a, a non-pressured or non-emotional decision. It might have been non-pressured and non-emotional, but was it spirited? Were there lots of disagreements? Were there arguments? How would you describe it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. There were, the, yeah, it was, in the end, we reached a consensus. It was, it was close to unanimous. It was not 100% unanimous, but it was close to unanimous. And um, so the debate, and this was a five-hour meeting, so the debate was, uh, was, was pretty heated. And, how, uh, how many dissenting votes were there? Uh, well, in Te technically none. Technically. There was there was there was one abstention. That was it. Could you could you continue describing the debate? You said it was heated. Well, I think that's I would I would I would have not described it as heated. I, you know, this is a group of professionals that have been aware of this issue coming up. So I think there was obviously a lot of a lot of uh, emotion, and there was a lot of I think there was actually I'm sorry a lot of uh, very thoughtful. Um, uh, uh, discussion. Um, it, 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 I wouldn't call it heated at all. The, it, and it really was, um, uh, we basically spent the afternoon, first of all, talking about the hype criteria. Because that's really, remember the function of, this, of the CTBOH, we're, we're basically keeping the list. I mean, we don't invest, I mean, people invest a lot into who's number one in that, but really we're a bunch of uh, high-rise geeks, engineers, and architects that are just keeping a list of buildings that was originally started, you know, 45 years ago. Um, and so the criteria is really, really more of what we focus on uh, because buildings have changed. The way we design buildings has changed. Back in 1969 when the council started, the, started who would have thought you'd have anything but a kind of museum flat roofed box? And so, as, as times changed, 
the real function of this uh, committee is to keep up with the times and keep up with the way the design is going. Can I ask, in the end, does it really matter for anything more than bragging rights? I mean, is it anecdotally, is, is there an economic shot in the arm for having a, a nation's tallest building or no? Uh, well, I think it's it, you know you, you people people uh, look at this there was there they, they they look at it and you know why are you doing why are you spend that money to to put that thing up in the air and and uh, there was there was an article which I'm sure you're all familiar with that came out a, a few weeks ago uh, unfortunately before this debate uh, and it was titled Vanity Heights um, these are not Vanity Heights in my mind being the guy that designs and has to build these things I I, I thought a better title would have would have been aspirational heights because these buildings mean something. They do mean something. I mean, I don't want to take away from that. Look at Petronas Towers, what that meant to that emerging emerging nation. Look at Dubai. Dubai is on the stage now. It's 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 a world stage that that building created. And you know, guess what? It's going to happen again and again. And so I, I really think it's more aspirational, inspirational in a way than 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 that. I'd like to address that question by saying that it, it, it absolutely does matter. And what we see here in the U.S. is clearly a, a more mature economic market where, you know, the quest to build, well, the quest to build the U.S. tallest this time round was inspired by events other than economic reasons. That's the first time we've seen that in the U.S., let's be clear, yeah? But actually, if you, but around the world, tall buildings are still being built to put cities on the map. You can see it in the title of the tallest. They used to be called things like Chrysler, Sears, Chicago Tribune, and now they're much li more likely to be called things like Chicago Spire, Shanghai Tower, London Tower. And, and, and what the agenda has changed, it's now as much about the projection of a developing city in a competitive world market for branding of a city and attention as it is the corporate um, institutions that used you know, that were previously building these buildings. So I think it does matter. And just to go back to the point about the heated debate, I think it's important for, for, for the people here today to recognize that we didn't necessarily meet on Friday just to rule on the height, well we didn't meet just to rule on the height of One World Trade Center. We have an annual meeting of this group and the meeting was to discuss the criteria and really to re-examine the criteria and say, for example, the, the di differentiation between spires and antennae, is that still relevant in today's world? And that's where I, maybe he said it's too strong a word, but that's where a, a, um, you know, a useful debate ensued before we even got onto the World Trade Center. So half the meeting was spent discussing the existing criteria. And you will note in the press conference, in the press release today, we announced the height of the One World Trade Center and put the note, CTWH reaffirms its criteria. And I think that's an important point. So there's no change to the criteria because your vanity height report suggested that a lot of uh, developers and architects around the world were jacking up their spires, you know, padding their height just so they could get, uh, you know, the, be the tallest building in their region or their country or whatever. You're not changing the criteria at all. No. Okay. We, we're not changing the criteria. Just to address that, uh, Blair, um, again, Committee's function on Friday was to rule um, on absolutes, to rule on measuring tall buildings. You know, and 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 really, you know, it got down to a discussion of, of, of if we do change the criteria, then what becomes architecture? You know, and who, whose word do we take for, for what is architecture and what is not? Um, um, but in terms of the vanity height study, I can tell you that we will we will still be continuing to issue those studies. That that is that is uh, an, an important part of what we do. As Pete said, we might not call it vanity height, but but that difference between highest occupied floor and and the tip of the building, I think, is a is an important study, and we will continue to do that. But that wasn't the function of Friday. Function of Friday was objectively how do we measure tall buildings? Does the World Trade Center spire have an antenna function? Not currently. However, there are possibly plans to put functional technical equipment off it. Can I mention one of the questions that I specifically asked when, when the S1 was kind enough, oh, I'm sorry, was kind enough to come in and, and talk to us, uh, give their presentation, was how involved was David Childs, the, the, the design partner in charge of that project, with the design of, of what we see there now? Because we do know, everybody knows that you originally wanted to have it clad in an architectural cladding, 
And of course, like most designers, he'll fight for his or his his original his original thoughts. Uh, but what what is there now is 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 a uh, exposed structure that he did have input in, and that was a question that I specifically asked. It's not it's not arbitrary. The design is not arbitrary. Those platforms out there are for are uh, for holding the lights that that will light the spire uh, uh, various seasons of the year. So we we felt that it really was genuinely a designed element, and that's really the difference. Again, going back to the criteria, there's a difference between kind of a, a, a functional and not to downplay functional is functionalism is great, but some a functional piece of equipment versus an architect designed element, and we felt that this was architect textually designed, and we were convinced of that. You're not SOM, so you may not be in the best position to answer this, but I, I'd like to push back on that just a, a little bit and wonder what they said to you. I mean, those panels that were removed, in one account I read, was some time ago, that they, they were not removed because of, you know, cost or value engineering. They were removed because it would make getting access to antennas impossible. And, uh, that, I mean, that was the statement that I had heard from uh, the, the Port Authority and the developer that there are going to be antennas on there and getting at those antennas behind that. And, the, and yeah. those panels were even referred to as a radome, which is an yeah. antenna. I, I saw that article too. But having said that, being a technical guy, um, the way that, that, that looking at the way those panels were, were designed, the size of that or the, the circumference, it's pretty obvious there's an internal, there would have been an internal. And there still is an internal. Well, I guess what I'm saying, though, is it embedded but, in that is the assumption that there will be antennas. Uh, well, you you have to get up to the top to change the light. So one way or another, you have to have you have to access that that structure. Um, but you'd have to ask us someone that, that question. Peter, did you ask uh, Child specifically about the quotation that he made in response to the? Um, decision to uh, not clad the spire. Uh, let me just read the quotation. We are disappointed that a decision has been made to remove the sculptural enclosure at the top of One World Trade Center, eliminating this integral part of the building's design and leaving exposed antenna and equipment is unfortunate. So that seems to indicate from the from the architect himself, which raised eyebrows here at the council, that you know Childs himself was was suggesting that it was now just an antenna. Of so so how did you deal with that, and, and well, how did he deal with that? Now I take I take a little different view. I've been in those meetings where the client wants to value engineer something out of a building, mm -hmm. <laughs> and and I know what what my designer, uh, you know, I love him dearly, but I know what he would do to try to maintain something that 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 he felt you know gave the building a little extra, whatever, little glitz or or part of part of part of his initial vision. And so I, I, he, he did a mea culpa. He basically said, basically, we asked him the question, and, and it, there's a quote in your press release, but I can read it here, uh, in what uh, David said. Uh, um, I, felt, I felt completely satisfied that this building achieved what we set out to do. Uh, beginning in 2005, we used the council's rules and designed around them. It's an important statement for all of us to make. And, and that's, that's the other thing. The rules, although they didn't bring this up, when they started designing this building, the rules were different. Not so much about the spire, but about the base of the building. We, we changed the rules about where, where to measure from uh, because of buildings like Burj Khalifa, which uh, were no longer being built in highly developed urban areas. The original, the original uh, rule for the base of the building was from, from the, uh, uh, the sidewalk outside the main entrance. And that, that works well with the Sears, although well, Sears does have a slope. Uh, it, does, it works well for most buildings, but that didn't work in the new world where you're building in the middle of a desert and there is no context, there is no sidewalk, you're building the sidewalk. So, so again, going back to, to what, what Anthony said, that's one of the main reasons that we meet periodically to discuss the criteria, to try to clarify and take into account those kind of uh, uh, elements of, the, of how we're now designing these tall buildings. Well, you said he did a mea culpa. In other words, did he essentially back off from that statement and say, I didn't really mean it, I was just kidding? Uh, he didn't use those words. What words did he use? He, you know, the, the, this was widely reported, Blair, as, as you know. You, you reported on it as well. And it's important because, really, a large part of the CTVH criteria is based on the architect saying that's an integral part of the architectural vision and so you know we were concerned with that actually I, I personally asked David that question and he, he he handled it very well he said that that was part of a much longer quote which often happens 
and was so I think he was implying that it was slightly taken out of context. I think he also said that his choice of words might have been better, but but irrespective of whether there'd been a change of heart in the minute or the year since he made that statement, he was very clear on Friday that he you know his words were I feel completely satisfied that the building now sets out now achieves what it's set out to do, including the spire. So, you know, so uh, that was very clear to us. Will you update this on the website now, or are you going to wait until the building's completed? Well, this diagram, the diagram here will be on our website. In fact, it probably is already. We announced it at 10 o'clock. However, right. it's not the US's tallest building, so you will see that it's the projected tallest 10, and it won't be until it's complete and occupied. So are you going to request that the World Trade Center take the notation on its website that we are the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere off of its website, or are you going to let them continue to do that? Well, Blair, I think we will strongly suggest to them that they change the wording to be in line with the criteria. However, you know, there's only a certain amount of power that we have. We can certainly suggest that to them. But, uh, you know, if you go to the CN Tower in Toronto, it's still touting itself as the world's tallest building. You know, there's only so much we can do. And it's not even a building. And it's not even a building. <laughs> What would you say to Chicagoans who are disappointed by today's rule? What would I say to Chicagoans? I would say, I would ask Chicagoans to, um, to ask themselves, how does this affect Chicago? Are any less people going to come to Chicago or even travel and visit the Willis Tower because it no longer holds the title of the US tallest? No, I don't think it does. Do any less people go to the Empire State Building in New York because it lost the, the title 40 odd years ago? No, that building has become a seminal part of the culture of a great architectural city, perhaps one of the best architectural cities in the world. And the fact of whether it holds a title or not, actually I think is, 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 is irrelevant. And then to jump to the other side, I think we need to look at the building that will soon hold that title. And again, I've mentioned it already, but I would say <coughs> this was not a economic quest for the bragging rights to the world, to, to the US as tallest. This was a quest to put something meaningful and symbolic on that site because of the horrible history of what had happened on that site. The 1776, you know, please remember that the time when that, when that project was conceived and afterwards, there were many, many other proposals for buildings taller than it in the US including, I think, the Chicago Spire, Spire in this city. And, and we didn't hear the team in New York say, you know what, we're going to put another 300 feet on it. To, this has been a completely different agenda in New York, and I think it's important to recognize that. It's about the symbolism of that site and the building and how it sets out to achieve it. Uh, I, I would also like, um, I, I, in a sense, I have a, a foot in both camps because I, I actually was born and raised in New York. And, and I've been a Chicagoan now for, for 30 plus years. Um, and I, and I, uh, you know, full disclosure, I, I worked uh, for SOM when the Sears Tower was being completed. And, and to, you know, Chicagoans, you know, the sun will rise tomorrow, but mo what's more important, look, look around, look at the triumph that that building out there represents. And, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm also a technical guy, I'm not the guy that gets his, his uh, name in the, in the lights. There's a team, there's a team on that building, there was a team of 200 people, all Chicagoans, that built that building. And that's a massive achievement. And so don't lose sight of that, and just because they're not around anymore. I, I have one other important point to, to add to that, for, for people that are watching this in the Chicago setting. I gave a presentation uh, earlier this year called Chicago, continuing home of the tall building. And right now, there are no major tall buildings going up in this city. <laughs> However, I can tell you that there's almost not a significant tall building going up anywhere in the world without the expertise of a Chicago firm. The tallest building in the world existing, the tallest building in the world being built, and numerous others on this list of 10 buildings have been built with the expertise of Chicago architects, Ch Chicago engineers, Chicago geotechnics, Chicago facades. So although the, the economic climate here is not one that is, you know, um, kind of promoting the super tall, Chicago is still the continuing home of the, of the tall building because of the expertise that pervades all around the world in these projects. Until one World Trade Center is finished, though, Willis Tower is still the tallest in America, right? Absolutely. Until the one World Trade Center is, is complete, and our criteria for complete is fully topped out,
fully clad and at least partially occupied. It fulfills those two of those criteria already, I believe. When it fulfills the third one, it'll be classed as complete, and then it will become uh, America's tallest. And when is that supposed to be? We believe that's um, early next year. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, just a um, and so we see right there, New York will be able to have bragging is, rights uh, once One World Trade Center is completed. That is projected for early next year. But as being classified, once that construction is complete, as being the tallest building in the United States, it will be the third tallest in the world, as we've just heard there, going up against the Sears, what was the, known as the Sears Tower, now, of course, the Willis Tower in Chicago there bragging rights and obviously world prominence on the stage right there. And again, that is once World Trade Center is completed, that's scheduled for next year, it will be classified as the tallest building in the United States, the third tallest building in the world. We have a complete report right here on abcnews.com. For now, I'm Dan Kleffler in New York with this ABC News Digital Special Report.